How's it going? How's it going? Good oh. Pesach out. All right, Larry, you're a Jew again. Welcome back. With awards buzz and critical acclaim building after a dazzling festival run and numerous sparkling reviews, Uncut Gems marks another step up in the careers of writer-directors Josh and Benny Safdie. These maverick young talents have come a long way since their DIY beginnings, with four fiction features, a host of short films, and two documentaries under their belts. Now, with the remake of 48 Hours as their next project, they're all set to enter the Hollywood mainstream. There's never been a better time to explore their back catalogue and discover just what makes the Safdie brothers work so unique. The most identifiable hallmark of the Safdie brothers is their distinctive visual style. Their films unfold in a series of tight close-ups, ratcheting up the tension even within ordinary conversations. Wide shots are few and far between, often filmed with long focal length lenses collapsing foreground and background together, merging the protagonist into crowds on busy streets. This is coupled with a fast-paced editing style, chopping between shots within seconds and rarely focusing on the speaker, often following several voices at once, which makes conversations believably hard to follow. This all adds up to a naturalistic approach, which is then subverted by highly stylized lighting choices and frequent use of pulsating electronic music. This aesthetic is really clear in their 2017 film Good Time. Robert Pattinson stars as Connie, a bank robber who involves his disabled brother in his crimes. After a job goes wrong, he's tied up in a series of escalating screw-ups while trying to free his brother. The film's shot in the same naturalistic camera style, long lenses, tight close-ups, and very few wide shots. But it's also heavily stylized. There are a few ultra-wide helicopter shots, lots of foreboding electronic music, and a vibrant palette that drenches even ordinary settings in bold color casts. This scene, where Connie tries to convince his girlfriend, played by Jennifer Jason Lee, to pay for his brother's jail bond, is a great example of these elements coming together. The camera is claustrophobically close to the actors. The sole illumination comes from passing lights, leaving the scene half in shadow except for the occasional harsh white of an iPhone screen. An atmospheric approach to an already incredibly tense scene. Throughout their films, the Safdies focus on characters living on the edge, from erratic dad Lenny to heroin addict Harley and bank robbing Connie. There's a focus on the chaotic rhythms of these people, exploring their complicated everyday lives and the fallout of their actions. This is most clearly on display in Heaven Knows What, based on an unpublished memoir by lead actor Arielle Holmes. Drawing on her own experience of heroin addiction, she portrays Harley with an intensity and authenticity not often seen on screen. The film's runtime is filled with the ceaseless chatter of people under the influence, focusing on conversations and arguments between Harley's gang of friends. Loyalties are fickle, there's petty theft and fights, death threats and dancing. And underneath, there's a sort of tenderness, often toward people who don't deserve it. Harley clings to her relationship with ex-boyfriend Ilya, despite his being absent for most of the film. In the opening, following an unspecified disagreement, she asks how to make it up to him, and he tells her to kill herself. Would you forgive me if I die? Yes. Here, with nothing else to hold on to in life, Harley tries to kill herself to earn back the affection of the man she loves. This disturbing turn of events is just the beginning of the film, and shows Harley undeniably as a woman on the edge. The film offers little hope for her, ending on an ambiguous note, although happily, Holmes is now sober and works as an actress, most recently in American Honey. The films of the Safdies are also notable for their absurd imagery. In Good Time, a bank heist takes place in lifelike masks and fluorescent jackets. In Heaven Knows What, a man gives Harley money explicitly to get high. Okay. And, as can prominently be seen in the trailer, there is a diamond-encrusted Furby in Uncut Gems. In some sense a manifestation of the touches of style in their otherwise naturalistic films, the absurdity of these images also underlines the desperate, senseless action of their characters. This is particularly prominent in Daddy Longlegs, also known as Go Get Some Rosemary, a semi-autobiographical story following divorced dad Lenny as he looks after his two sons for a few weeks. His life is erratic. He makes last-minute decisions, has a host of bizarre friends, and puts his kids in dangerous situations. The film is peppered with absurd images that serve to illustrate just how erratic and out of touch with reality Lenny is. Instead of giving money to a homeless man, he does a handstand to spill coins on the floor for him. He takes the kids on a trip to upstate New York, where they pass a speedboat carrying a band and a water skiing singer. 
Most prominently, he frightens the children with a made-up story about a giant mosquito they see in a museum. He then has nightmares about the mosquito descending on him, sucking his blood, and eventually corners and splatters it in his bathroom. The net effect of these bizarre images is that the viewer ends up feeling like Lenny, unable to understand the world of the film and constantly adapting to changing circumstances. All of these elements come together in Uncut Gems. Adam Sandler delivers a career-best performance as Howard Ratner, a classic Safdie character living his life on the edge with manic bursts of humour. You having a good time? Yes. Now that you're caught up on the work of the Safdie brothers, be sure to check it out.